systems. She she always drew pictures. And they're just like rudimentary little pictures, but you can see, you know, she has a lot of encounters and stuff with angels, so she writes a lot of stuff about angels. But whatever it is you see, if, if you're comfortable just writing a picture, draw a picture. Um, it's in a round tree, just um, R-O-U-N-T-R-E-E. -E. You know, and she's just, she don't have a problem with writing down visions and dreams and stuff. She's not scared, you know, so... Um, so anyway, she had this one teaching, and she said this. It's called Paper Doll Christians. And it says, the Paper Doll Christian, Christians copy one another by using standardized methods of ministry employed in the church. Or they attempt to reproduce the kind of ministry that was effective in the life of a famous minister of the past. They may try to duplicate the conditions that brought revival at another location. This use of patterns and formulas is actually a form of divination, a method of obtaining results in the spiritual realm without God's help, which he will not tolerate. Satan will often supply some of his limited power to this occult practice to advance his evil purposes. The false prophets in the Old Testament would repeat each other's words or pronounce prophecies that God had not given them. So with what God is showing us, I just want us to remember we don't need to make anything up and we don't need to just repeat things that we heard. If God shows us something, and I'm not like, because see, you got to watch it. You know, you can start telling people this and no one wants to say anything. And they're like, well, I don't know if it was the Lord. It might have been somebody else and maybe it's not me. I don't want you to back all the way back. I just want us to know that there is a balance to this. Some people say stuff and God never said anything to them about it. If you read Anna Roundtree, she doesn't have any problem telling you what God's seen. And listen, honestly, one of the things that you're going to learn is that you're going to hear about big prophets, you know, that are out there and they have big prophecies, but some of them are just, they're not hitting it. They may be prophets, but they're not hitting it. They're not, they're not, they're not going in and, and speaking. And some of them are learning, obviously, so you don't want to just throw every prophecy out because, you know, well, that's not a prophet because they, they got it wrong. Well, how many times do you do that with your pastor? What if your pastor didn't have the greatest message last Sunday? Not a pastor anymore, sorry. You know, a teacher ta taught something, but he said his words wrong. Oh, not a good teacher anymore, forget him. But they do that with prophets all the time. Well, if it's a false prophecy, then you're supposed to stone them under the Old Testament, so now you're under the Old Testament. Very nice. You also aren't supposed to mix your, your clothing together. If you're wearing cotton and polyester, you're also in trouble. So, you know, well, yeah. <laughs> Ew, that's a bad fashion thing too, but... You know, so, so you know, you got to have a balance to this stuff. You can't go around, everybody's wanting to prophesy, everybody wants some type of... Listen, once you're, once you're um, confident in who you are in Christ, you don't have to go get anything else. You just be you. God can speak to you in the Spirit through visions and dreams. He's, he's opening us up in these areas. And some of us, you know, kind of had more than others. We'll just keep going with what you got. You know, God's already working on you in your area. Your area, your area of expertise. <laughs> He's already working with you on it. So it's not like something that you're going to have to go find. He's, you've got it. Just keep pursuing what God's pursuing you for. So Jeremiah 14, 14, And the Lord said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. So the Lord was telling even in Jeremiah's day that these prophets are just prophesying out of their own hearts. And what's the difference? What's the difference between a false prophet and a real prophet has to do with where it's coming from. You say, yeah, but how do I know it wasn't the Lord? It could have been the Lord. Well, the Lord would know because the Lord knows what's in the heart. And the Lord would know that he didn't. Would you know if you spoke to somebody? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the Lord knew he didn't speak to them. He's like, I didn't speak to these guys. They're going around, they're yapping. So do you think that that happens today? Yeah. Of course. There's people that are going around, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord said the other thing, the Lord said no such thing. They just want people to get around their vision, you know, because they're taught that. You know, they teach ministers you're supposed to create a big vision and get everybody around it. That's totally not in the Bible either. <laughs> write the vision down. What vision? Your vision? Or do you write down what? What God is speaking. You see what I'm saying? So, the, so, well, what God is speaking, what I'm speaking is the same thing. Okay, sure. Sure it is. <laughs> okay? So this is the kind of, this is the age that we're living in. And it's the same age as it was under the Old Testament. People still do the same kind of stuff. All right, now look at this. So this one, this is a little, I don't know. This one's a little more rough, you know, just because it, it is what it is. But Jer turn to Jeremiah 23 and 30. 
I get this right here. Jeremiah 23, 30. So people do stuff because other people are doing it. I was talking to somebody about that this week. We were like, well, you know, you go to these places and they all look the same. Why is that? Because everybody's copying each other. They find the, quote, successful one and then everybody copies the successful one. Well, how do you know that that's successful for you? That was successful for them. Well, yeah, but, there are, but it works. It works to do what, though? What did God ask you to do? Because if you just reproduced what they have over here and that wasn't supposed to be over here, you were actually supposed to be working in another area, you're, out, you're outside of what God wanted you to do. So our idea isn't to go find what everybody else did and do what they did. We, you're supposed to speak what God tells you to speak. <laughs> and that is tough sometimes because when you speak what God tells you to speak, nobody wants to hear it. Look at the Old Testament prophets. I mean, they were not very pleased. They were like, oh, thank you so much for sharing that word. They were just like, you get out of here. <laughs> they didn't want to hear it. So 2330, therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophet, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. So when these people or the prophet or the priest asks you, saying, what is the oracle of the Lord? You shall then say to them, what oracle? I will even forsake you, says the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people who say the oracle of the Lord, I will even punish that man in his house. Thus, every one of you shall say his neighbor and every one to his brother, what has the Lord answered and what has the Lord spoken? And the oracle of the Lord you shall mention no more, for every man's word will be his oracle, for you have perverted the words of the living God, the Lord of hosts, our God. Okay? So he goes on, he talks about this some more, okay? And this is, a, this is a false use of prophecy. This is a false use, you know, people, so, so we're going to have, like, there's a move of the Spirit, okay? Obviously, I mean, this is freaky stuff going on right now. It's cool, you know, but it's, it's pretty intense, and it's the Lord, okay? But there's also people that are, have no heart after the Lord at all. There, I mean, it could be Balaam's error, you know, which is they're greedy. It could be Balak, which is they are powerful and they just like to destroy things and take over stuff, and that may be their thing. You know, it could be Jezebel, where they like to prophesy falseness and, and use, um, uh, you know, what is it, you know, like a, a gossip type of thing to control. You know, that could be any one of these false, but there's also the true. There's also the real prophet. There's also the real priest. There's also the real king. And God sets these guys in to do his will on the earth. But what's the difference? They have a heart after the Lord. They don't have a heart after building a ministry, building a base, becoming popular, getting listed. You know, I was listening to a couple of guys and they were talking about like how Facebook is now, um, what they're doing actually is they are uh, shadow banning prophets. Like there's the prophets like um, Champ, what's his name? Um, you know, one of these guys, you know, he, he's being, he's being uh, shadow banned. So like he'll have one post, he'll have like 100,000, all of a sudden he'll post another, it's like 10 and they shadow banned him, no one could see it. You know, so, so you're seeing all this. So, so what do we have? We have like this, who's popular? Who's got a prophecy out there? You know what I'm saying? This is a ministry thing, okay? This is, now listen, you say, well, I'm not doing that. I'm not it. But you know, people, you get this. You get this in different areas of your life. You just have to watch, you know, how that comes, especially, and the reason that I'm telling you about it is because the Lord's going to show you stuff. <laughs> He's going to show you guys things. You're going to have visions. You're going to have dreams. You're going to have things. And I just want us to know beforehand to be prepared. Don't fall after some of this stuff where you feel like you have to say something or you feel like, you know what I'm saying? You, you're like, you're not, you may not be there yet, okay? But you might soon. And I want us to remember that. So there's a pattern. And it may not be, maybe it's not a heavenly pattern. Maybe the, maybe the pattern doesn't have anything to do with prophecy or gifts of the Spirit or revival. Maybe it has to do with Winning the lost. How many people are we going to win to the Lord? You know, how many techniques do we need to get the most number of people into one place so that we can win them all to the Lord? Because you know, if you get them together, that they that they know the Lord, which isn't true either. You see, so there's a lot of things that the Lord wants us to just really consider, you know, regarding this kind of stuff. Because these are papered all Christians. These are Christians that do something because other Christians are doing it. Ah, <laughs> see, that's not popular. She said it, so I'm repeating it. <laughs> you can blame her for it. How about that? 
Uh, the Pharisees obeyed, this is the rest of it, the Pharisees obeyed complicated rules and rituals of behavior, but their reverence for God consisted of tradition learned by rote. The Lord refused to copy both the customs of the Pharisees and the God-inspired fasting of John the Baptist. He listened and watched for his father's instructions moment by moment. So you see what I'm saying? So, you know, what did Jesus do? Did Jesus do the same thing as John the Baptist? No, he waited for his father's instructions and then he did that thing. So that's the way we should do things. You know, you're, even in your businesses and in the things that you're doing, you know, every day, because that's your ministry, that's your worship. You know that, right? You guys know that what you do, like if you homeschool, that's your worship to the Lord. If you build a house, you build it to the Lord. You're doing your, your work of your hands is your worship. Your work is your worship. It is. So you do it unto the Lord. So you work up to the Lord, right? So when you do that, don't just go around trying to copy everybody else's thing. You're like, well, they're successful. Yeah, but what is the Lord telling you to do? Because that's what is going to be successful for you. And sometimes that means that you're going this way when they're going that way. Because the Lord's telling you to go into a different direction. But understand that the Lord knows this. He knows. So now what do you have is you're having a heart after the Lord. And when you have a heart from, towards the Lord, guess what the Lord's going to do? He's going to share his secrets with you. He shares his secrets with those who are humble and of a contrite heart, have a humble heart before the Lord. So I think that we can just learn something from that. Yeah, we're going to see that. And I don't want it to be like a negative thing. I want us to look at it in the positive aspect is, is what? If our heart is, is humble before the Lord and we're seeking and have a heart after God, God will reveal to us his secrets, his secret things. He will share his word with us so we know about the future. We know what we're going to have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation operating through our lives. And so we'll be making decisions in our businesses, decisions regarding the people that we're speaking to and stuff like that, because we're not just trying to copy somebody else's technique, somebody's method. Well, it worked for them and they're very successful, so we should do the same thing. Well, you should do the thing that God tells you to do because success, what did Jesus say? I have 5,000 people following me, so the Lord is pleased with me. No, that's not what he said. Because when he had 5,000 people following him, he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and they all left. <laughs> so you want to do that? You want to just copy that? Okay, so it, it's, it's about doing the will of my father. That's what he said. Amen. Doing the will of my father. In other words, the will, okay, the will of the father. Okay, listen to this. It means that God likes it. It's his pleasure. Mm -hmm. He enjoys this. Isn't that a better way to say it? Like, you must do the will of the Father. It's like the will of the Father. Okay, what does that mean? It's the Lord's good pleasure. He likes this thing that you do. That's what that means, the will. So when you're doing something, the Lord's like, man, I love it when you do that. Like you were saying earlier, worship. I love it when you worship. I love worship. And then the Lord sings over us. Now that's awesome. So you can hear that too. And then you can hear the hosts of heaven worshiping. Just good stuff. The Lord likes it. That's what the will of the Father means. It means I really enjoy this. So there's something that you do on the earth, your worship and your work to the Lord, where the Lord goes, I really love it when you do that. When you're coding away or when you're working on roofs or working on sails or doing different stuff, right? I love it. And even if you're thinking, well, what is it? It's just a temporary job. It's just this. It's not. It's your worship to the Lord and you can have a good time. I remember when I was selling cars. I was selling cars, guys. I mean, I was selling cars. Some of the car sales guys were, did not know, they did not know Jesus <laughs> at all, you know? And I'm, but I'm enjoying the Lord while I'm selling cars. And man, I can get caught up in the spirit while I'm just standing there selling cars and woo, away I go because I just worship the Lord while I'm working. I don't know what's going on. I had a good time the whole time, you know? And that's, that's all you got to do, just be in the spirit. It's way better. Okay, so we're not copying. We're just following. Following the Spirit, following the Lord, even if everybody's going this way and we're going that way, it's okay because the Father is pleased. Remember what he said of, to Jesus, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. That's who we are. So follow the Father. Just that little snippet there just to kind of go with, you know, what God was showing us tonight. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching if you're watching. We're done.